Hey there, dog lovers. Get ready to mark a special date on your calendar, October 5th to the 7th. Right here in the heart of Vermont during the breathtaking foliage season, I'm thrilled to invite you to the Canine Fusion Workshop. We're diving into the art of assessments, the joy of playful interactions, and the exhilaration of cane across. No matter your role in the world of dogs, this workshop is designed for all of us who cherish our canine companions. Join me in a passionate community of dog enthusiasts for an immersive experience of learning, connection, and growth. And here's the best part. Your experience will be complemented by the beauty of Vermont's foliage season. And did I mention that we've got your meals covered? Lunch, coffee, and snacks are all included. Reserve your spot now by visiting our website, vermontdogboardingandbehavior.com slash workshop. Let's fuse the magic of training, play, and cane across into an unforgettable experience. See you on October 5th. again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, owner of Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive Hyde Park. It's the show that delves into the training, socializing, behavior, nutrition, and wellness of your dog. And brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard, with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant. And previously, in Talking Dogs, it was part one of our series. It was called The Front Door and Guests. So obviously, this is part two. Yes. So last week, we were we took it from the, uh, the dog. Uh, point of view or standpoint. This week, it's the guests that are coming in. Now we have to kind of train them too. Yeah, and here's the thing too. And I, I always, when I meet with my clients, they say, you know, I've, I have my a, a friend come over and my dog will go and jump on them, and I just tell my guest to, you know, walk into them or to turn around or whatever. And I don't feel like it's our guest's job to train our dog. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. That shouldn't be their responsibility. I don't want to go over to a guest house and and it's my responsibility to work with their cat or and then their I horse. Need, or, and then I need this manual when I walk in the door. <laughs> yes. How to enter the door with the animals here? <laughs> yes. And so that's that's the first thing. The second thing is I went to a client's house a number of months ago, and they actually had a note out on their front next to their front door. They have a, and they had a new puppy at the time. And it said, upon entering, please ignore the puppy. We are working hard for manners and, and whatnot. And uh, that was amazing to me because it wasn't leaving it up to the guests to say, hey, train my dog. Yeah. <laughs> upon entering, train my dog. So you appreciated the note. I did because it, not only as a dog trainer do I appreciate it, but also a guest to the house that says, okay, so this is what I should expect when I walk in. I know what's going on. I know what may happen. And I know what it's going to look like. And so sometimes if we leave a, a, a note for our guests, especially if your dog is a big barker and really wound up. Yeah, so when you walk in the door, if you're not ready for it, I mean, Oof. you could get bombarded. I, I just had a dog this past week come in for a lesson for jumping. And this dog actually wouldn't jump on you. It would just jump up straight in the air in front of you. And that dog not only looked at me eye to eye when it was airborne, a couple <laughs> of times it got higher than me. Wow. And so when you look at this and go, and there's a note outside that says, please be patient. I just want my dog to be calm before I open the door. Something as simple as that. Yeah. So the guests know upon you know arriving the expectations of what's going to happen when, it, when they get inside and what it looks like. And then we go from there. But those notes on the outside, are, I, I think it's an integral part of this. Not many dog owners do that that are in that situation, do they? No. I, that's the only time. I've been, I've been doing is this. Is it because s- they, they just don't think of it, saying, hey, that'd be a good idea. This is, you know, maybe we should try that. I think, number one, they probably don't think of it. But num- then, number two, they want their guests to actually help train the oh, dog. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, but there is, and that's the other part of it, too, is that when they do, when our guests do enter, it's okay to give them instructions of just ignoring the dog, yeah. don't pay attention to the dog, don't pet the dog, any, anything mm-hmm. along those lines. If you have happy-go-lucky Lassie that's just giving a nice greeting and is a friendly dog and there's no issues, then by all means, if your guests want to pet them, they, you know, yeah. it's, they're free to do so. But we have to give instructions, too, that says just ignore it. I, you know, I'm going to grab the leash for a second. I just want him to calm down. So just ignore the dog. And you can still have a normal conversation with the guest. It doesn't have to be this, like, sterile classroom environment as soon as they walk in. Yeah. Of course, this is especially important for guests that are not dog owners because they yeah. don't know anything about uh, the training of a dog. So when they walk in, oh, what a cute dog. And then they start almost like playing with them or something. And then you, of course, have lost a lot of ground and all that training that you did with your dog when they when the guests come in. Yeah, and you look at it and and here's the thing too is that that bad behavior is getting rewarded. 
yet again. <laughs> and so that hole just gets deeper that we're trying to get ourselves out of. And all the more reason to not only advocate for our dogs, but give our, our guests directions as to or instructions. This is what I just need you to ignore the dog, which most everybody should be able to do pretty easily. Of <laughs> Ignoring is an easy thing to do. But telling your guest to walk into him and tell him to sit and give him a treat and yeah. all this stuff, it just is not, it's too yeah. much. Yeah. And then you're confusing the dog because now, now who's training it now at that point? You know? yeah. But of course, when you do – now, do you do this for guests that are dog owners? Do you find that dog owners kind of understand what they can expect? Sometimes I think we dog owners are the worst. <laughs> really? Wow. Well, you get this you, – you'll get somebody that invariably will say – I'm a dog person. Dogs love me. And I've heard many people say dogs oh. love me. And then the story later that the person gets bitten because they think that every dog loves them except for the one that mm. bites them. Right. So we do have to be careful. If it, But it should just be – the instruction should be just straight across the board. Just ignore the dog. Yeah. Okay. Back with our question from the doggy bag in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Roaming is a Los Angeles-based premium lifestyle brand that is motivated by nature. Roaming features high-quality, earth-friendly dog products made from renewable and natural materials like their bio-based and 100% compostable biodegradable dog poop bags. These bags really are awesome. I've been using their bags for a few months now and I love the durability, the way they feel, and the fact that they are good for the earth. They also have a special discount for our listeners. Use code VermontDog to get 20% off your first purchase, including 20% off the first three orders if you sign up for one of their poop bag subscriptions. They also have some beautiful leather leashes made right here in the USA. You can check them out at roaming.com. That's R-O-M-N-G dot com. Back with Talking Dogs with Ian Grant from Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive Hyde Park. Want to look back or listen back, as the case may be, at some of these shows or other podcasts that Ian produces throughout the course of his week. Just go to his website, vermontdogboardingandbehavior.com, and click on podcasts, and you can listen to your heart's content. Our question this morning, Ian, is what do you feel is the biggest mistake dog owners make with their dogs? Boy, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's the top one. It means not even the top ten. So how do you narrow that down? I'm curious as to what you would say with this, with all these years of expertise and knowledge of sitting and <laughs> being a part of this show. The biggest mistake that dog owners make with their dogs – Overtraining them, possibly, or uh, that's what I would say overtraining them that they're not dogs anymore, that they're mm. almost like uh, robotic. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yep. that would be mine. Yep. I think for me, it's probably too much affection. Oh, that's a good one, too. Be- yeah. Because I think we're also in this, I think for dog owners, we're always focusing so much on we have to reward, we have to reward, we have to reward. That we now start rewarding our dogs for every single little thing, almost to the point where we're micromanaging them. And then everything to the dog is excitement and everything is I get affection and I get touch and I get to get in my owner's space and get affection for that. And, and I get all these treats and, I put, and I put on weight. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It just becomes this literal snowball effect of everything is excitement. Everything is just intense and then we don't really think about the rules and the boundaries. And then when things get out of control from all this, then you got to ramp it down. Ooh, and that's that's where the dogs kind of look at you and go, "Huh? Hey, what, what happened? Hey, it was uh, fast times at Ridgemont High? <laughs> yes. Now where are we going? Now we're at Peyton Place. <laughs> yes, everything was you know nice. I had everything that I needed and that I wanted. And now here, here comes Ian and trying to inst- instill all these rules and boundaries. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to me, it's it's affection. It just happens too much. It also happens unconsciously. I I sit down with a lot of clients whose dog walks, dogs walk by them, and they just reach out to pet, and they don't even know they're doing it. So mm. it's just one of those things that happens a lot, and we don't give it any thought. Yeah. So they good. So that's kind of what we were. We both kind of had the same idea: excessive something. I say it was exactly. excessive training, and yours is excessive affection. So just giving them too much, yes, can be uh, can be quite confusing to them. Yeah, it can create some chaos for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and then we are the ones that have to correct it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and that takes a lot of time. Yep. If you have a question for Ian, you can email him directly to info at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior. Dot com. Next week, it is The Power of Fear, Part 1. So what do you mean by The Power of Fear? There's just a lot of dogs out there that have a lot of fear of whatever certain situations. Uh, and I actually I love working with dogs that are on the fearful, skittish side because it's so rewarding when you see them come out of their shell. It's kind of like I knew it was in there somewhere. 
but I wanted to go- break this down a little bit between a couple of shows because there are some mistakes that we're making with dogs that are fearful that I think we need to bring to the surface to let everybody know what's going on. And we'll be back with that next week on Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And for the trainer Ian Grant, I'm Roland LaJoy, and we are Talking Dogs. <laughs>